Hey guys, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair. Today I'm working on another RTX 2060 Super. Um, I got this card off of eBay and um, it's just reported as not working. So um, let's take it apart and see if we can figure it out. So I have the board exposed here. Um, nothing looks too remarkable on it. It looks okay. There are some telltale signs, which I'll get to in just a moment. But a normal first step when diagnosing these, when you're not sure what's wrong, is to measure the, the power rails. So we'll start by the PCIe 12 volt lane here. And that's normal. Check the three volt lane. That is also normal. Then you come over here to the 12 volt in over here, and this one's actually bad. So we get a short here. And uh, I did look over this board, and I believe that a uh, visual inspection is, is one of the most important processes when it comes to diagnosing these things. So when you look very, very closely, I do notice we have a solder ball here, which means it might have taken some heat through here. And there's a much bigger solder ball here in the second one, um, which leads me to believe that this one is bad here. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm thinking that this is not actually short. It's just, it has a direct pathway to the low resistance of the core through the bad MOSFET. That's my theory at least. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, but if I if I remove that, then um, my core or my 12 volt over here should clear. So I'll do that now, and uh, let's see if the line clears up. So admittedly, I haven't tried to solder next to these these caps yet or use hot air I should say. Um, I'm not 100% sure how we'll take it. I know that a lot of other people worry about these quite a bit. Um, but I do believe I have very good control of my hot air and I think I can make it work. I could be wrong and we could see this pop, but I could be right. So I'm just gonna like shield off both of these sections that may be uh, susceptible to heat. And I'll try to keep my heat in the middle of there so it doesn't spill over too much. And if everything goes correctly, um, those caps shouldn't pop. I don't know this from experience, but let's see. So I'm going to remove the MOSFET now. And this, this extra metal is also going to give me extra heat sink, which means uh, it will be even a little bit harder to pull. I put a little bit more flux in there first.
Okay, so that wasn't so bad. We got it off. Um, yeah, not too bad. So, let's see. I, I don't know why this is a different color. Maybe it was bad. Maybe they're all like that. I, I really don't know. Um, but I should see if my 12 volt line is still short or not. If it's not, I'll be uh, very happy. And there's a chance that this will be fixed. It's not. Good. That is really good. Good, good, good. Um, I think I'm going to test this card to see if I can get like at least error 43 out of it now. I, I believe that's safe. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but this is my card and I like to run experiments when it's my own property. So that's 2.9 kilo ohms. I, I don't know what line that is, so I, I don't know if that's normal. But basically, I'm just checking for shorts real quick. That's 12. I believe that's PEX. Maybe this is PEX. I don't know. But you know what? This is the 12 volt that goes down there. Core is right here. Core is low, like always. Uh, this is memory here. Uh, check memory on this side. Nine ohms, probably fine. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this in. Let's see uh, if it will give me something. Okay, so I have the card plugged in. Uh, let's try to turn it on and see what it does. giving me a green light on my motherboard like it's already fully booted so I should have image and I don't. Um, let me just measure some of these inductors. And see if I'm getting power. It doesn't look like it. 0 0.05 volts, zero, uh, I'm only getting 0.6 by my 12 volt rail, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 12. It looks like I also have a bad fuse because I'm getting 0.6 volts on one side of it and 12 volts on the other. Yeah, so that's that's another issue. So this is the, the fuse that is bad. I should have continuity across it and I likely do not. Do not have continuity across. Get a diode mode reading on that one, but I do not on this side. So I need to replace this. I'm going to see if I can find the value and if uh, the one that I have uh, will be good enough for it. So give me a second for that. Okay, so it doesn't look like I have the exact same thing as this. Um, this is my own card, like I've said. Um, so because of that, I'm going to go ahead and put in something that I hope will work well enough one of these fuses and if anything goes wrong it's my own card I can fix it again I would expect the only thing that would really happen is possibly for the fuse to die at which case it'll be in the same situation I am now or honestly I just expect it's gonna work I, I don't think it will be a problem so let's try
And I'll just add a little bit of leaded solder so it looks a little bit easier the second time when I'm putting the new one back on. And I'll go ahead and put one of my donor fuses on. As I said, I, I think it will be okay. This uh, shield I put up is kind of bouncing the hot air back at my hand. It's kind of hot. So I'm trying to take it away before it burns me, but I need to hold it a little longer. Maybe if I just change this angle to here. I forgot to shield my plastic parts and that's why you put a shield up because as you can see this one already started to deform. So I'll have to fix this with a razor blade. It should be fine still. Honestly only the pins matter. This is just holding it in place but that's why you put up a shield. You don't want to melt things. I want that to attach just a little bit better. Could have gone a little better. I should have used my smaller shield over here. This is all messed up now. I mean, it's fine. They're going to work, but... I still need to replace this MOSFET before this card will fully work, but I don't have one, so I'm going to have to order it. So I'm back, and it is a new week, and I have received my MOSFETs. So, let's see if I can get it installed on here and working. So I do apologize if you hear a drone in the background. Um, it's probably in a lot of my videos. I do have a mining rig um, with loud fans, and it's not very far from me. What I'm doing now is actually just trying to remove the old solder that is there, so I can put new leaded solder that will melt at a slightly lower temperature. Let's see if this works. And it's working okay. Could be better.
turn up my heat a little bit on my iron. It's pretty low. There we go, that's working. So it looks like I'm exposing a little bit of copper right there, but if that's all connected anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll just double check that. And I should be a little bit careful with, uh, with what I have left, which isn't much. And while that's not perfect, it's 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 good enough. I got most of the, the solder away, and I'll put new one on, new solder on. So I can check if those pads are supposed to be connected to each other with these ones over here. It's the same structure and it already looks like they are. Yeah, and I have continuity all the way across those. So it's okay. And anyways, it doesn't, let me see, it's just, that's actually ground. So I should, Oh wait, all of this is ground. Is all of that ground? Oh yeah, that's all ground. So that doesn't matter. This is all just one plane anyway. Okay, so... Change my iron again, and I'm going to put on some leaded solder on those pads as best I can. Uh, my goal is to just get even little pillows of solder on each pad. It doesn't look good yet, but it will be fine. I just need a lot more flux, I think.
little bit more solder on my iron. definitely more solder on that middle section than I would like. This is a pretty awkward spot to work in. Um, yeah, that's it. It's awkward to work in. Okay, I think that should probably be okay. We'll just try it because I'm overworking this area right now. So these pads actually don't even really matter, it's just ground which is also connected right here. That's not it. Okay. So let's just put this on now and see how it goes. <clears throat> so we can see if this little shield will be enough to save this these caps. I hope they will. So I'm going to switch back to my slightly bigger nozzle. You know, this nozzle should be fine for this. Turn my fume extractor back on so it'll be allowed again.
really have to examine to see if this is attached correctly. I think there's a good chance it's not, and I may have to adjust it. Um, let's see. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Um, let me make sure I'm looking at the right one. It should be this one. And it's harder for you to see in focus. I have a much bigger range, but those are all connected. They look like. Let's see the other sides if I can. Those also look connected. That looks good. This side is mainly ground. But the three on the left right there are connected properly, which is the ones that matter, these ones. This one is all connected, so it's not as important at all. And then the final side is going to be harder to see because of the length of the card. But it looks okay to me. So this looks like it's okay to me. Um, I should double check to make sure that the line's not reshort, which it shouldn't be. The 12 volt rail over here, that is. I'll just make sure this isn't short over here like it was before. Um, even bad placement, I don't think this would become short again. It's not. just checking to make sure nothing just happened to become short and it doesn't seem like it so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's plug it in and, and see what happens now So let's see if the driver is installed. Right now it turned on, which is good. And that's a great sign. Let's see if we're uh, if we're good. Nvidia RTX 2060 Super. This device is working properly. That's great. So it looks like uh, the card's working now. Um, what? I don't know. Uh, thanks for stopping by and watching. Um, as a recap, let's see. It was a. Uh, it did look like there was a possible short on the 12 volt rail, but there was no short. It was actually just a shorted MOSFET that was connecting the 12 volts to the core. Um, and it was giving me a bad reading there. So uh, removing that MOSFET removed the short because it wasn't connected to the core anymore. Um, the filter was also blown. I replaced that one and I replaced the MOSFET and now this card's working. So I'm back. It's a new day. I didn't feel quite right about how I left off. Um, I've educated myself a little bit. A fuse. Put an 8 amp fuse on there. I have 15 amp fuses here. A fuse's job is to, you know, pop if it takes too much amperage um, to save the rest of the circuit. Um, an 8 amp fuse could only handle at 12 volts, 96 watts. Uh, an 8, uh, 8 pin connector can potentially pull up to 150 watts. So far I've been using this card and mining with it for a few days now 
and it's been fine and that means that this never pulled more than 96 watts here um, otherwise this fuse would have blown um, I don't think it will if because it hasn't at this point yet but you know I have the right one here and I'm just gonna feel better about putting the right one onto here so let's just do it Okay, I feel much better about that now. Now I'm pretty sure this card's gonna be safe. I'm not gonna bother testing it for you guys because I already know it works. Um, I just did this. I decided to leave all this in the video because I wanted to show that, you know, I'm not really like an engineer. I'm just like a, uh, a normal guy that's picked up a lot of tricks and I don't know everything, but I do try to learn and educate myself um, whenever I don't know something. And I know it's much safer to have a 15 amp um, fuse here than the 8 amp. So I replaced it. So I'll say thanks again for watching and bye one more time. Have a good one, guys.